In this video, we're going to talk about braising. What is braising? Braising is a combinational cooking method that uses multiple techniques and through a slow cooking process, it transfers something like a cheaper cut into something very delicious. So in order for us to braise properly, there's a couple of things we need to follow. First, we have to make a marinade with red wine. And if you don't want to use wine, that's fine. You can use other liquid as well. What we're doing in this case, we're going to heat up the alcohol and then burn off the alcohol. So there will be no alcohol in the marinade itself, except just the flavor of the wine. And then along with that, we have other things like the aromatics. We have onion, carrots, parsley, garlic, thyme and bay leaf. What we're going to do, we are going to heat up our wine, dealkalize it, and then we're going to add all our aromatics and then we're going to let it cool and we are then going to marinate our veal and beef shanks. So let's get started. I'm going to pour my red wine. I'm going to bring this to a boil. I'm just going to use my lighter and then actually light the alcohol and let it just cook off and then I'm going to allow it to cool and I'm going to add my aromatics. So as you can see our wine is coming up to a boil. I'm just going to take a lighter and then light out the alcohol. You can see it's cooking away. It's going to just burn off all the alcohol. So once our wine has come to room temperature, we're going to start marinating our shanks. So I'm going to put the beef shanks in here. I'm going to add my carrots, parsley, garlic, thyme, bay leaf, onions and I'm going to pour my red one into my aromatics I'm just going to get my marinade a stir and I'm going to pour it into the container I'm going to marinate this for at least 8 hours. We can do it for 24 hours, we can do it overnight. So after marinating our shanks for 24 hours, I'm just going to remove any of the veggies. So I'm going to take out my parsley. Some onions on top, we have the bay leaves, the carrot. And then I'm going to quickly strain this. Okay, so it is strained. So next, I'm just going to remove my meat and put it on some sort of paper towel just to let it dry up a bit. I'm going to pat it down dry. The second piece here, remove any veggies, okay, last piece, there you go. So I'm just going to add my veggies back in this pot here and now get rid of this bowl. I have my red wine, my veggies, as well as my shanks. So I have separated my red wine, so I'm just going to add this to my small pot. I'm going to bring it to a simmer and I'm going to skim off any impurities. So we have dried our meat, after that we're going to season them, salt and pepper on both sides. So you can see I'm just sprinkling from a height, salt, 
black pepper. I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna do it again. Yes. So, my so first all surface area, my piece of paper, so and pepper both sides again. And after that, I'm gonna dust it with flour. So with my shank, I'm just gonna remove this. I'm just gonna dust it with the flour, all sides. Like so. I have one here. And keep doing that. Make sure we cover all sides. All right, second one. This one's a big one. Okay. So cover everything. And the flour with the leftover, we're just gonna toss it touch since it touched raw meat. And I'm going to dust off all the excess, right? So we're just going to shake it off, shake it off. And I'm going to remove this and then we'll toss it away as well. So we have our veggies strained. We have simmered our red wine and then took out the impurities. I have added a liter of stock, which is 50-50. I like using half beef, half chicken just for more flavor or both flavor. And then we have our uh, shanks that's just seasoned with salt and pepper on both sides and then dust it with flour. And then right now I have my cast iron heating up so I can pan sear the beef. So my cast iron is starting to heat up. I'm just gonna pour some oil in here. We want a nice generous layer so we can sear these uh, beef properly. I'm just into the next color. I'm here You want a nice color. Something like that. It's got a nice color now. I'm gonna remove the ones that have a nice color. I'm gonna put it in my pan. So this stick can go a little bit. I'm gonna add my last piece in. Again, this process might take a while. You wanna make sure that everything is, all sides are nicely seared properly. So I'm gonna even with, because the thick piece, I'll keep it like this. So I just removed my beef. I add, drained out the oil, I added new oil. I'm gonna add my veggies. I'm gonna cook. So once we get some color from your, our onions, carrots, and all our aromatics, we are going to use our wine from before, the red wine that we have simmered off, and we're just going to pour it in and deglaze it. to add our chicken and beef stock so it's one liter 50 50 so I'm going to pour my liquid into onto my beef along with all the veggies and everything else Everything goes into our pot. Just make sure we have mix the veggies around. After that, we're gonna put this, we're gonna add a, sorry. After that, we're gonna put a lid on. We're gonna bake this at 275 degrees for roughly five to six hours. It could be anywhere between four to six hours depending. So we're gonna check starting uh, right after, we're gonna check after four hours. 
After five hours in the oven, as you can see, um, it's almost falling off the bone. Some of it even fell off the bone, so it's fine. I like to actually keep anything in terms of braising in its liquid overnight, so I'll put this in the fridge and then we'll finish it off tomorrow. So to go along with our braised beef and veal shank, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get mashed potatoes and we're gonna do some glazed carrots. So we're gonna first do with the glazed carrots first. This has been washed. I'm just gonna use a knife and trim the end. Let's get rid of this. And then after that, I'm gonna use my peeler and I'm gonna peel those carrots first. So in terms of peeling a carrot, what I like to do is I actually take my peeler and I'll go away instead. Don't bring it towards you, otherwise sometimes you can easily cut yourself that way. I'm gonna flip it this way and then go. There we go. Okay. So all my carrots have been peeled. I'm just gonna trim it now. So in front of you here, I'm just gonna cut the tip as well. And then salt. So what I wanna do is make sure that they're all roughly equal the same size so that they cook at the same time. So in doing so, I wanna make sure that maybe for the, this, some of these bigger ones, first I'm gonna cut them in half. Start with that, roughly in half. So maybe I'll do this. And then again like this. Okay, now depending on the size of the carrot, we also want to cut it one more time. And then for glazing carrots, what I want to do, I'm going to prepare, I'm going to put in all the carrots that I have prepared in a frying pan, a single layer. After that, I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. And you can just sprinkle it in the water is fine as well because what ends up happening as the water evaporates, it's going to make uh, the salt concentrate a little bit and it's going to glaze the carrots. We also need some sort of sh uh, sweetness. In this case, we have maple syrup. And then we'll also have butter, a little bit of fat. So it's going to coat it nicely. And then a little bit of pepper too. Going to turn this on. So the water is reducing and now it's just kind of almost your butter as well as your maple syrup now and it's going to start to color these carrots and smell the sugar. If your carrots aren't done yet, we can simply add a little bit more water if we need to. The only way we can tell whether this is done or not is if we eat a piece, try to see if it's sweet enough, it's salty enough, all those things. So as you can see, it's, it's got a nice color now. We can turn this off and then we can reheat it later on for our braids with mashed potatoes. Done. So in this part of the video, we're going to make mashed potato to go along with our glazed carrots as well as our braise. So here's what we need to do. We have potatoes that are cut and then we soak them in cold water just so it doesn't turn brown or oxidize. After we're going to strain the water from the potatoes, we're going to add it into this pot with boiling water. We're going to bring it back to a simmer and then cook it very, very low heat. Water from potatoes are drained. I'm just going to add this in. 
So as you can see, the water is starting to boil. I'm just gonna turn it right down to a low simmer. And we're gonna check on the potatoes in about 20 minutes. So when the potatoes are ready, we basically strained it. I'm gonna pass it through. So we're gonna put potatoes in. We're gonna run this through this drum sieve. So once we have passed all our potatoes, we're gonna season it with salt. Just give a mix. Okay, season a little bit more salt. A little bit of pepper. And then we have just a garlic butter with dry parsley. Just gonna pour this in. And I'm going to slowly stir that in and emulsify and then kind of blend that in there in the mashed potato as well. We can add more butter, we can add more milk, everything else. This is at this point, this is just uh, taste and preference. And I'll reheat it later on when I finish the whole dish. So don't be afraid uh, to put more butter. Butter. butter, more butter, more butter. And we're going to season it with butter. We're going to have a butter. We're going to taste, taste any salt, pepper, and we'll season it if you need to. So, after allowing the braise to sit overnight in its own juices, in its own jus. Uh, what we've decided to do now is just slightly heat it up so we can actually remove um, the shanks from the liquid itself. So I'm going to remove the shanks from this place in the liquid. So to get the bone is off, just put it back, and we put it next to our meat. It's very tender. So we're going to strain this liquid. I'm going to use it to make sauce. So I'm just going to strain this braising liquid. I'm going to reduce that into a sauce. 